Hello everyone and now welcome to game three in this three game set. I don't know if the games were mislabeled, but so far, um, Hawk currently has a two to nothing lead. Now, it could be a straight 3-0 victory, Hawk over um, Calypso, or I could be casting these games out of order. I try my best to make sure I do cast them in order. So they may have just been uploaded out of order and we'll see what's gonna be happening here. So far, I do believe that we will be having a very, very similar match to what we've been seeing as of late. Blade Master and Archmage opening things up. And will we perhaps see a little bit of a longer game here on Echo Isle? Echo Isle has been a map where the Archmage often tries to set up an expansion down over here. But so far, we haven't seen Hawk really abuse um, any sort of expansion play he has not been playing to expansions and if he does try to go for an expansion what his, what of his benefits will be the fact that he can in fact clear out this mercenary creep camp early set up an expansion and then just hire up a whole bunch of units that is one possible strategy but it feels like hawk really likes that archmage beastmaster one two punch early on we'll see if that is going to be con the continued strategy coming in from hawk meanwhile calypso what is his strategy is going to be it looks as though it is a blade master we'll see if it will be followed up by a shadow hunter we could see perhaps a torrent chieftain but that is generally more often found against night elf players as night elf players do rely on Druids of the Talon, and Druids of the Talon do fall rather quickly after all of those shockwaves. Um, human players, all they need is a handful of spellbreakers, and all of a sudden your Torrent Chieftain just becomes a walking buff that takes a lot of damage. Blademaster now already on his way out. It looks as though he's going to be doing a little bit of creeping. Meanwhile, Archmage is now going after the Ogre Warrior creep camp, not even bothering to militia creep out this mercenary creep camp as of yet. Archmage already on the move. Leftover water elementals and militia going to finish off this troll trapper. It looks as though the uh, water elemental will get taken down, but the Archmage is already halfway across the map with a circlet of nobility extra 50 hit points extra 30 mana very nice as the archmage may try to poke in a little bit of extra damage onto these units so far the grunt did take a little bit of a fire blast by that archmage nothing to really worry about as a water elemental now joining in on the fight there you go water elemental engaging against the poor um, poor ensnared Grunt right now as the Grunt is now backing away. So far that Blade Master is still wan wandering around here. And this is looking like a pretty straight up game. Both of these players getting in po into position. The Archmage preventing the Blade Master from really trying to level up. And this is an important, important indication. Also, Hawk doing a good job scouting out his opponent, knowing that the basic timing of when his opponent is going to try and push. We are taking the tier 2 for the human player as well. So it looks like it will be a very, very fast Beastmaster and a tier 2 push. Now, at that time, you can see one Water Elemental. Oh, going to get taken out by the Grunt. A lot of damage onto that Grunt there as the Blade Master gets a little bit of bonus experience by taking down that unit. So far, that Blade Master sitting at level 1 does have Boots of Speed uh, regeneration from that Healing Salve, also helping out tremendously as the Archmage is now looking to back away, perhaps trying to clear out this Mercenary Camp, which may actually be his undoing if he engages at this time. Water Elemental is now dropped, as we are seeing a bit of an engagement here. The Grunt perhaps trying to get himself in harm's way to prevent anything else from coming through. So far, the Footman is now taking a lot of damage, and we are going to see a little bit of pathing and yes we are wow that blade master trying to chase after this unit here we may see a little bit more pathing again no hawk's second footman doesn't care if one of his brethren dies it looks as though that footman has one slice to live and it looks as though oh it is gonna go ahead and engage and aggro up against that blade master here does not aggro enough of the creeps to actually get taken out as we now see hawk going after this no brute creep camp the problem this time around though is that hawk is not sitting at level two blade master may get some free experience yes gets to level two and calypso is looking very good at this stage he could easily take down this archmage there's also a tome of agility off over here i don't believe it has been spotted yet as the blade master now going after 
this poor, poor Footman. That Footman has taken a lot of damage here. That Blade Master already um, at level 2. Looks like he's going to finish off this Footman right there. No one more hit needed. Random number generator uh, for the fail there slightly as the Beast Master is coming in. This is especially what we were... Uh, this is exactly what we were expecting to see as we are now at Stronghold. One low hit point Footman is going to be able to sneak away as the Archmage is still absorbing a bit more damage. And we are at 5 minutes into this game and still without Brilliant Aura, that is the reason why we are currently down Water Elementals. Only one Water Elemental in play. The Grunts now trying to fight back here. The Peons are repairing and repairing. Not going to really work out though. 30 over 30 supply as the Beastmaster falls at level 1. Alright, a little bit of an unsuspected blow there as the Beastmaster falls. This Grunt now trying to run all the way to the back here. The Archmage has to get away from here. It cannot stick around in that fight as we're looking at the Water Elementals still continuing a bit of this push. Blademaster going to go after. Yes, takes down one Footman. Another Footman could get taken down here. And Hawk is now in a little bit of trouble, kind of overcommitted into this fight. Another Footman gets taken out as the Blademaster is just going to town on all of these Footmen. If he has a Clarity Potion, easily takes out... Yes, takes down another Footman there. And now is already sitting at level 3. Does he have level 2 Wind Walk? I'm not sure. Um, could take down another Footman here. And that Blade Master looking so strong at level 3 at this point. So far, we have two Orc Burrows and also one Shadow Hunter in, po in position. Blade Master looking very good. Seeing that level 3. Meanwhile, the... Um, Archmage just got to level 2 finally with Brilliance Aura and that should help out. Shadow Hunter wants to try and level up once again. It looks as though the Shadow Hunter going to go ahead and take down that Troll Trapper. No real problem there. Meanwhile, the Blade Master is getting in some easy shots onto an unsuspecting Archmage. But the Blade Master here is now slowed himself and is now facing a little bit of an uphill climb. All right, the Blade Master trying to chase after this sorceress. The sorceress looks like she will be able to slip through and, yes, head back inside the base, sit back over here, and now heal back up. All right, let's take a look at this Blade Master coming back around. Is it going to try and break wind walk? It's not going to break wind at all. And now head back. So far, the Shadow Hunter is still sitting at level 1. Did pick up, I believe, the Tome of Agility. Um, yeah, 4 armor on a Shadow Hunter at level 1 seems kind of high. But then again, um, Blade Master has 5 armor. And both of them are primary agility heroes. Blade Master heading away. Does have the Circlet of Nobility and the Boots of Speed. Able to get home in a hurry. As we may see the Archmage try to creep out this Ogre Magi creep camp. All right, Beastmaster now dropping down some units. We are going to see a bit of an engagement here. Ogre Warrior now going to fall. There goes one. A second one should be falling as the Militia are going to get held up here. Now, as the Militia are held up here, that means that they are not going to continue a push into the Orc base, which is going to buy time for a War Mill. The Spirit Lodge is already done. I still don't see a Beastiary, oh, Beastiary down over here. So all of these buildings are now done. This is now moving into the end game scenario for the Orc player. And the Orc player actually likes this. He likes the fact that both his Beastiary and his Spirit Lodge is done. I believe Ensnare is done as well. The Spirit Walker should be able to uh, research or go into Adept, Adept training as well for disenchant when trying to battle up against these summons. Mass summons do fall apart to spirit walkers. Their disenchant does deal a lot of damage. All right, there is an item steal there. And are we going to perhaps see a couple of the other units fall? No, the Blade Master is still wandering around here. Um, I believe he's... I don't know if he actually stole the experience. I know he got the item at the very least as the Shadow Hunter now at level 2. Shadow Hunter at level 2 clearing out this Murloc Nightcrawler creep camp. Meanwhile, back over here, Blade Master sitting at 3. So it's a 3 2 versus, I believe, now a 2 th or 3 2 as well. Both sides seen on level 3 heroes, and the Archmage has finally caught up. All right, there is a little bit of damage there. The Sorceress was able to break the regeneration, and the Blade Master really needed that replenishment potion for more mana and more Wind Walk. All right, let's go ahead and come into this fight here. It looks as though the Troll Trapper is going to end up. Oh, who got the experience? 
I'm not 100% sure. The Shadow Hunter could have stolen that as the Blade Master is right there as well. So far, we are going into a fight here. There's that Speed Scroll being used as the, all of those units are now trying to run away. Speed Scroll does counteract the slow movement speed from the Sorceress, but not the attack movement, uh, attack movement or the attack speed of all the units as well. So even though they are able to chase very effectively, they are not able to still deal that damage. Poor Spirit Walker got sniped by a priest off over there as the Water Elementals are still engaging. All the casters are off to the north, focusing on to the right units. That Grunt is taking a load of damage from all of those casters, but now we are going into Troll Headhunters. The Headhunters are going to deal good amounts of damage as we see the Beastmaster has fallen at level 2. Blademaster gets a quick disenchant. Are we going to see a slow? Yes, we are. And there goes another Sorceress as well. There's a Hex onto a, onto a poor unsuspecting Sorceress. That Sorceress looks like it could get taken down. And is it going to fall? It looks as though yes, it will. And Hawk losing a lot of the casters as the Beastmaster was quickly, quickly resurrected only to be forced to use a Potion of Greater Healing to stay alive. All right, here we go. What's happening next? Shadow Hunter sitting at level three. Peasants are off over here. They are, they are going to get picked apart very, very easily. And as they fall, that is just going to be absolutely bad news as more experience given to the Blade Master. Blade Master will not get to level four, I don't believe. Should get pretty gosh darn close though. Yes, 25 experience away from level four. And counting. The Shadow Hunter does have a Claws of Attack plus six. Uh, still curious as to why it isn't on the Blade Master. As the Blade Master does deal uh, the majority of the damage. Double scrolls of healing on the Blade Master as well. As we are looking at, there is no expansion down over here. That Blade Master still looking to see what his opponent is up to. And there is an unsuspecting low hit point sorceress, which would get taken out if he's not careful. Oh, invisibility as the Hawk did spot the Blade Master. And now the Blade Master is just wondering where exactly did that sorceress go? That sorceress at 75 hit points. So glad that it is invisible, knowing that it knowing that he will not or she will not get taken out anytime soon. All right, let's see what's still happening over here. That hawk saving a sorceress. We'll see if whether or not that was an important, important moment as the ring of regeneration on a beastmaster makes him just a bit more tanky. Now currently healing up two extra hit points a second. No, decides to sell the um, ring of regeneration for a scroll of regeneration instead. Blade Master now pulling back those units here. It looks as though the Shadow Hunter is now sitting at level 4. Slightly higher level than the Blade... Oh, Blade Master also sitting at level 4 now. As we see him picking up a potion of lesser invulnerability. Now, is that Blade Master going to pick up the Claws of Attack plus 6? I do believe so. And there is not very many places left to try and grab... Oh, walking by a Tome of Strength. Apparently not really caring about it. Um, Blade Master... Oh, come on. Read the book. All right, Blade Master deciding not to read the book. And we are now looking to see what's happening here. Blade Master perhaps going to pick up some additional items. Is it going to use a healing salve? No, it gives the scroll of healing back to the Shadow Hunter. Claws of Attack has been given to the Blade Master. In addition to the speed a scroll of speed, in order to um, just run down all of these units just in case they are slowed. Hawk's Army, 50 over 54 supply. Calypso sitting at 58 over 70. That does mean that Hawk is harvesting more gold right now um, just because he is at no upkeep. Meanwhile, um, Calypso actually losing about, I would, what is that? 30, um, 70 times 6 is what? 300 gold or 180 gold a minute right now. And that is going to add up over time. Every minute that he is currently mining and he is currently mining means that he is about losing a grunt onto the battlefield, but it may not matter as we now see Hawk losing about his arcane vault. Hawk now seen at 56 supply. It looks as though um, some more spellbreakers are being added here. Uh, Altar of Kings not getting to get focused down. Are we going to see an engagement here? Yes, the spellbreakers are arriving to the party, but a little bit ahead of the sorceress. Archmage now just trying to get in some um, chasing down there as I don't believe we had 
Um, no, we do not have pillage at this time, or I don't believe we have pillage, as we're now going to see a bit of an engagement. All right, there's the speed scroll. Spirit Walker now running to the back. You can see that the Spellbreakers are already charging in there, and the Spellbreakers should be stealing some of that Spirit Link. No peons in this group, surprisingly, though, to try and absorb some of that damage with that Spirit Link. We are going into a bit of an engagement. Hawk still fighting his way through. Blademaster is there. Invisibility on the Beastmaster as the Sorceress now taking a little bit of damage. Are we going to perhaps see slow cast onto the Blademaster? Yes, it is, but it still doesn't matter as we are still fighting this out. The Headhunters are in the backfield. A quick couple of disenchants, and all of a sudden the Caster army is very, very much depleted. We are still going in for an engagement there. There is invisibility. Oh, there's a Hex as the Beastmaster is able to get away. Disenchant, I believe. No, not even a disenchant. The priest, um, the priest was able to uh, break free of it or um, break free of that there. I mean, as we're now looking at the Beastmaster still trying to run away. Spellbreakers getting ensnared there as the Blademaster is going after some of those lower hit point targets. This is not looking good as the Spellbreaker takes 156 hit point critical strike. So far still fighting more units. The Blademaster doesn't have a, sp a sp scroll speed any longer and Calypso still charging in here. It looks as though he may be able to take down some of these key, key units. Those are, that's a lot of low hit point units and for some reason there is no focus fire onto them yet yes the headhunters are actually focus firing them now and it looks like that may be enough there is another ensnare onto the beastmaster beastmaster now down to 233 as the spellbreakers still need to run back all of a sudden the sorceress have become the front line and that is actually bad news when your opponent has a whole bunch of troll headhunters that are able to just really push through here level five and level five on the spell or on the blade master and the shadow hunter this is still looking like a lot of damage the beast master constantly being invisible so that he doesn't get taken out but he might as well be out of that fight already all right all the units are in full retreat so many sorceress on the field what is that? Nine sorceress on the field, all of them with adept training and with a level five archmage. That is plenty of slow to really just uh, slow things up. All right. It looks as though the headhunter going to end up falling. There it goes. As the sorceress army, the mass sorceress army is so much slow, making it near impossible for any of the units to engage as they are just constantly running around and just walking like they are in slow motion. 43 over 60 compared to 41 over 70. No demolishers to try and take down some of those casters. And even if you have demolishers, because of the mage's attack and the heavy armor on the demolishers, those demolishers end up um, getting focused down by those casters pretty quickly. All right, coming back around, we are going to see the Archmage coming over here. Spellbreaker is right there. Water Elemental has been dropped. Blademaster now going in for an engagement, trying to take down this Spellbreaker. Will be able to do exactly that. And here we go. Here is that fight once again. So much slow being cast as the Sorceress are just slowing down the entire army. Kodo Beast does start eating up and will start digesting a Troll Berserker, but it may be too little, too late, as the Blade Master is now going after the Beastmaster. Beastmaster does have a potion of lesser invulnerability, once again going to um, go invisible for a moment before it's going to cast another Quill Beast and rejoin in on the fight. Blade Master now going after the Beastmaster again, but there is so much hero focus. Oh, the Caster Priest was able to survive right there. That would have been a free and easy target to take out as another 200 hit point critical strike comes in. All right, the Blade Master now looking to focus down more of the units. It looks as though, yes, the Hawk is going to take a little bit more damage, or Hawk's Water Mental going to take more damage there. It finally gets taken down as the Blade Master still trying to be that one-man army. Blademaster sitting at level 5, not quite yet up to level 6. Speed scroll now being used as the Blademaster now continues to chase here, takes down another caster there and that Blademaster is actually finally broken the lines perhaps and is now looking to deal a bit of damage. Alright, no more scroll of healing. That is important though as we're looking at the Shadow Hunter falling at level 5. That is bad news now and now the Blademaster has no more support. There is the GG Hawk taking 3 games off of Calypso in of best of five series three straight games thanks for watching thanks for listening hope you guys enjoyed it